Welcome to the Sailor Noob Podcast, where a super fan and a noob talk about the original Sailor Moon episode by episode. I'm your host, Mikan Hana, joined by my co-host... I'm the co-host, Caliban and the noob. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. You know, the teapot's got, like, body image issues. Uh, right? I think so. Like, it's okay to be short and stout. That's totally fine. But it's like, it, he defines himself by his short and stoutness. Or herself. Or herself. Yeah. yeah. Let's let's not... It's uh, not a problem. You got a handle, you got a spout. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Let's, let's make this happen. We're a couple of magical people ready to moon cosmic power make up this episode. Today we are talking about episode number 104. Tomodachi o motomete chibi moon no katsuyaku in Japanese. Making new friends. Chibi moon's adventure. The English translation and the English title tainted tea party. Yeah. Uh, Tomodachi, a friend. Yes. Uh, I hate to announce to all of our Tomodachi friends oh. the immediate cancellation of this show because I got a new favorite show. What's that? And it's called Shoju Commando Izumi. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. I can't stop watching this show. It's amazing. <laughs> That's so great. It's a, it's, and I said, I think I turned to you and I was like, this is like a live action anime, but with all, out all of the negative There's hangups that those like have. There's only like 12 episodes, so I doubt that we can make a podcast out of it. Maybe a special feature though on the Patreon. Uh, man, it's so great. And from what I understand, like it came out in like, uh, it's so like mid 80s, you know, mm-hmm. but it came out really at the end of a run of those it's not really tokusatsu but um the sort of like karate kung fu uh schoolgirl like type shows like it is the the pinnacle of of the medium Mm -hmm. and there weren't like a lot of shows like that after that like Mm -hmm. it's the last sort of gasp but man it's 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 too bad because it's fantastic yeah it's so really great like do more of that japan i'd eat that up so (sighs) Well, now you've got, well, I don't know. There's, uh, the, so the Power Rangers are, it's just all Power Rangers now. Here's the yeah. deal. If you like Power Rangers, that's fantastic. I I enjoy Super Power Sentai. Rangers. I don't love them. Yeah. But um, let's pass a law. What's that? Right? Let's get the emperor or the, or the prime minister. Okay. No more, uh, no more shows like that. No more. No more tokusatsu then... for like a period of five years. Whoa, I don't know if I want to say we'll no see, more. We'll see what how we can, you know, develop this this genre. I want to see schoolgirls who have been submitted to a dangerous <laughs> biofeedback process who now have amazing combat abilities. Yes. And are just taking guys out left and right. They are a weapon. Blowing up trucks, turning around, not even looking at the trucks no. as they walk away. Cool, cool girls don't look at explosions. That's we, what I've heard. We know, we know this. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't. So, There's no. no way you could. No. uh So anyway, I've been checking that out. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's fantastic. I did not know about it before, but it, it's just, I mean, there are so many cool things in Japanese popular culture, um, and this is just another one. Yeah. And it makes... I'm just really excited about it. I'm sad that there's only 12 episodes. Well, but... that's good, though, because it means I'll be done. And once I'm done, I'm moving on to Takane... No Hana-san. Oh, yeah. Which is a uh, Japanese comedy uh, featuring Rika Izumi. <laughs> and she plays a tough, a tough office lady. She's the boss. Oh, I like that. She's pushing people around, but she's like in love with her subordinate. She's like, oh, we're going to tell him. No. That's uh, Get your that's work a, done. That's an interesting dynamic, being in <laughs> love with your subordinate. We don't see that that a whole lot, I feel like. Oh, anyway, it's it's happening. The full weebening is, is taking <laughs> is taking place. <laughs> it's just above my ankle, and it's going to continue right oh. to the top of my head. Okay. Wow. Just above your ankle. That's not very far. I'm still, yeah. But uh, spreading. I have all my hair, right? Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. You've seen me from, from the... Top down. Yeah. Uh-huh. I, I got my hair, right? You, oh, you totally got your hair. So I'm just really insecure for some reason. <laughs> Maybe it's watching all these young Japanese people fight mysterious guys in sunglasses. Does it automatically make you feel older? Because you're like, Everything what a, makes what a, me feel older. What Everything a badass does. in like a schoolgirl uniform. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if, 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 if the pile of feedback, I don't know what it's done. And I'm like, oh, my back doesn't hurt anymore. <laughs> But you're supposed to fight. No, no, this is great. I'm going to go on a bike ride. Uh, he's a, it's a failure, this experiment. 
<laughs> so anyway, um, speaking of experiments, uh, I don't know. Like, we've been having a good time uh, talking about, uh, of course, live action Pretty Guardian Sailor Moon. Yes. And also uh, animatification uh, on the Patreon. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe we'll um, mix it up at some point. Maybe we'll try. Yeah, why not? Doing something like watching one of these live action series. Uh, I guess if there's a, a response, if people want to want to hear that, we can do that. Yeah. Um, probably, like, do it in blocks. You know, like, watch, like, the first two or three. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever it's divisible by. Uh, and tackle it like <laughs> like that, but yeah. uh, I would love to do that because these are great, and a lot of them are you know available online. Like um, yeah. the Rika Zimmy show that I was talking about is like on YouTube, so that's cool. Uh, if people want to watch it and then hear us talk about it, we could do that. I think so that I guess, would be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, let us know uh, yeah. on our various uh, outlets uh, wherever we are. I, uh, I vote like yes. That idea. Does that count? Okay, all right, we got well, one vote. <laughs> so, <laughs> One in the yes column so far. Uh, okay. We'll see if you get outnumbered. I, I might be a little biased. <laughs> um, without further ado, um, would you like to start us off with a synopsis of today's episode? I will try to uh, synopsize yeah. this, but there's a lot happens. Yes. And it may uh, end up being like uh, the Borges story, I can't remember the title of, where they make a map. That's so accurate that it is just like one to one. Like the map is the territory. It's oh, simply wow. the map is so big it covers the entire nation that they're mapping. That's massive. And so you are just walking on the map. That uh, sounds about right, though. This will be a retelling, maybe instead of a synopsis. But I'll do my best. I wanted to note that with the addition of Chibi to the cast, yes, uh, we have not, at least on the DVDs that we're watching, yet changed the opening. So, no, we have not. Uh, we're on opening watch. Yeah. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. No, I've I've been checking. Um, um, the other location that we sometimes watch from too, and I haven't seen it change yet oh, either. Okay. So, All right. So I trust them. Yeah. Uh, it'll happen someday, just yeah. hopefully before the last episode. <laughs> uh, but in this episode, we open on the face of Chibiusa. Yep. And her red eyes. <laughs> which is... <laughs> you know why she has red eyes? Uh, is it a spoiler? No. Oh. Can you guess? Because it goes with pink? Because rabbits sometimes have oh, red eyes. Oh. Okay. That's why. It's still. Still an interesting design choice. I, I agree. We want our small child to have red eyes. <laughs> okay, John Carpenter, just calm down. She's super intense. Yeah. <laughs> she says, I, small lady, a.k.a. Chibiusa, have returned from the future to train. Please be good to me. And she and Luna P both bow. I love I it. I guess Luna P just rolls forward. Right. Uh, wow. And that's the teaser. I think they're starting to figure out how to how to use teasers. Mm-hmm. hundred episodes in. <laughs> They've got it now. Better late than never, right? As we return, we see that she's at Hikawa Shrine. She's talking to the girls and the cats. And everyone's like, uh, okay. But Usagi <laughs> says, oh, yeah? Who decided that? And Chibi says, uh, Miss Sakino, I got a note from my mother excusing <laughs> my time traveling. <laughs> Welcome back. Cotter jokes, dude. We'll see. We'll see how that <laughs> plays out. Usagi says, give it here. And Chibi says, here you go, Monaco. <laughs> I love it. You know, the leader of the Sailor Scouts. Yep. Manaka reads the letter and Usagi has a minor meltdown. The gist of the letter is, thanks for taking care of small lady. Teach her how to do all those 20th century things. Mm -hmm. And everyone else is like, that's it. I mean, nothing... Nothing in here about sending your insanely powerful daughter back through time. Yeah, I know. And then I'm just like, nope. Oh, and uh, the letter is written in hiragana characters. There's no kanji. <laughs> yes. And they all examine and, and judge her for that, her They're, future yeah. self Everybody's and like, her Whoa. present self. Yeah, look, one character was written wrong and erased. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Usagi is embarrassed. Uh, you know, I don't know what she's embarrassed for. She's just a school kid. And that letter was written by an adult. That's okay. true. Who apparently also doesn't know kanji characters. But is that her responsibility? Would you? This is the Sailor Moon's version of, would you go back in time and kill baby Hitler? I know. Right? <laughs> no. You're going to blame Usagi for... There's 10 years between her and this other person. And it's weird that At Usagi's least. baby Hitler when they're the grammar Nazis. <laughs> Well, anyway, Usagi's like, should we focus on Chibiusa here? And Monaco says, what kind of training does she need? And Ray says, well, she doesn't need Usagi's clumsiness. And Chibi says, yeah, future Mars told me a lot of stories about that. This is too much for Usagi. I know. And she throws herself at Ray, like, what did you tell her? And Ray's like, I haven't told her yet. (laughs) I don't know. So Usagi would kill baby Hitler. Oh, yeah, she would. So they're fighting off in the distance. And Chibi's like, don't worry. 
I won't become clumsy like Usagi. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm off the train. And she just takes off. Yeah, I'll be training at the play place at the mall. I know. <laughs> I'll be training real hard. I'm going to just go off by myself. I'll be doing uh, ball pit swimming exercises <laughs> and uh, it was cotton candy endurance test. Right. So I got to go do that. Well, I love how like Minako also finds like a smaller note. Like, well, yeah. In the envelope. Yeah. That's like, hey, uh, past Usagi, study your kanji. <laughs> hey, dear baby Hitler. Yeah. Uh, I should have studied when I was your age. Yeah. So do your best. Yeah. Okay, forget Hitler. She's trying to Marty McFly herself. She is. If Usagi studies hard, then future Usagi will get a cool truck. <laughs> and Doc Brown won't be committed. Oh, that's the second one. You're, I mean, he just gets right. He just gets shot in the first one. But that is At what At the Juban doing. Twin Pines Mall. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> You're right. That is what she is doing. Yeah. There's, you know, apparently there's different sort of, you know, theories about time travel. I mean, I don't mean like science. I mean, the only thing that matters, stories. And some of them are, you know, Back to the Future, where you go back in time and, oh, my God, my brother is disappearing from this photograph. So I got to change it. Right. Uh, and then there's, you know, the idea that like, well, I mean, time is just like a, con a continuum. And so any changes that happen will have already happened or are happening. And so... I kind of feel like that's how the show is 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 treating it. Yeah, we talked about this in R, but um, because think about the butterfly effect. It's like, hmm, Chibi needs to like get some friends. I'm gonna send her into my own past, and yeah. hopefully she won't be fighting with Usagi when like a garbage truck comes by and they both get hit because they're not I, paying attention. I know. Yeah, watch, watch out for the butterfly effect. Yeah, right. Uh, that's true. But I guess we won't worry about that. Uh, and Usagi's like, I don't want to study. <laughs> <laughs> on the street, Chibi is enjoying the much more relaxed 20th century, a century where you can hang out and do whatever. Yeah. But she's about chill. to get, she, yeah, she's about to get a taste of just how relaxed it is. We see a flashback, flash forward, mm -hmm. a flash back and forth to the future. Mm -hmm. And Neo Queen Serenity is sending her off and she says, in the 20th century, you must learn to make friends. Because mm -hmm. all the children in the future are dead. I don't know. Like, is it, are they just very protective of her? It's Does probably, she... oh, you know what it is? Hmm. It's hard to make friends when you're the daughter of the queen. I think that that is And everybody is probably... treats you differently. Yeah. But in the 20th century, you're just a little kid. Exactly. With red eyes. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that. Yes. <laughs> so she's princess and the pauper ring herself. God, yes. She's going to another locale where she's not a princess and people will treat her normally. She could just be a normal, a quote unquote, normal, regular kid. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. A regular kid. <laughs> Who's got magical powers. Yeah. Right. You know. And, and a robot that follows, follows her around. Yeah. Yeah. So we're looking for uh, Tomodachis here. Yes. And she goes to the park to do that. Mm -hmm. And she figures that the friends will just come rolling in. She has no idea what to do. But what rolls in instead is a squeaky little doll that bumps up against her foot. Mm -hmm. And she picks it up. And it's a little man with chin on his shirt. Uh -huh. The English word chin. Yes. And you're going to have to help us out with this. Uh, but I'll keep going. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep going. I'll help you out later. Like I, oh I've, my God, I, I need can... the help now. Do you... <laughs> no, no, it's, it's okay. It's, it's a right. reference, and she, we'll get to she it. She looks to see whose doll this could be, and as the music swells, she sees a boy. Just a good-looking boy. <laughs> He's even well dressed with his pleated chino shorts. Uh -huh. He's wearing an ascot. I know. So you know he's fancy. You do, yeah. And Chibi's like, I gotta know this guy. A valuable acquaintance. <laughs> She offers the doll to him and says, did you drop this? And he says, ah, yep, it's mine. <laughs> and he starts gyrating his hips. He's like, hey, hey, hey. Oh. She's like, uh, what? And he starts like hip thrusting. He's like, like uh, Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man yes. 3. Yes. He's like, do you like bell peppers or scallions better? If you and I had a late night coffee, we'd be cafe au late. <laughs> Which is what? solid. And I've lost my title for the episode. But, you know, they're homophones. Yes. Not this kid. Yeah. Uh, Chibi falls over and she's just like, please, please stop this. Yes. Stop what you're doing. And the kid's like, hang in there. I'll use my final resort. And he pulls his pants down and shows her his dick. I know. <laughs> I think. I think there's a cultural element here that we're missing. Not that anybody, th this would be okay in any century. But no. maybe this is like a real solid bit in Japan. Also, when a child does child abuse to a child, mm -hmm. I think all the childs cancel out and it's just abuse. Um, 
I guess. Decided that we were doing awful. Harry Potter and the Curse of the Pervert Child. Oh my God. I know. Uh, so, but this... you just, you can tell us about it later. I will tell you about okay. it later. I promise. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to prepare. Okay. Mercifully, the kid's mom arrives and drags him off. And he's like, I'm being punished in the name of the moon. I know. And he calls his mom, Yoma, monster. Yeah. Yes. Later, Chibi is just shivering, yeah. walking down the sidewalk. And she thinks, I guess I got to be careful when choosing friends. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson number one. <laughs> Undeterred, she looks up and she sees another boy. Wait, is she, is she here to make a friend or to hook up? Uh, I think she's supposed to hear. She's... If she wants a friend, give Momo Chan a call. What happened with that? Yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, I think we'll see. I'm slight spoiler. I think friend. we'll see Mom- Momo Chan again. So. Oh, that is a spoiler. Yeah. Well, I'm. Do I get a sticker for that? <laughs> sure, you get a sticker for All that. Right, no, uh, you look, haven't gotten a sticker in a look, while. I will earn a sticker. I believe you. All right, here we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just pull my pants down. <laughs> look, it's an elephant. No. Uh, anyway, this <laughs> this kid this kid is decked out in traditional dress. Uh, he's got uh, very very lovely sort of soft hair, and Chibi thinks, oh, so cute. Mm-hmm. Uh, kawaii. Yes. She tries to follow him, but she loses him. And as she's looking around, she hears Chibiusa. And she turns, and it's Mamoru. Yes. And she's like, mama John. Yeah. He seems happy and not freaked out that she's back in time. <laughs> it's a weird life that he lives. He he must know. Maybe Usagi, like, that's, called him yeah, or something like that. Well, that, that makes sense because yeah. uh, we see that Usagi is right there. So maybe she told him. They're at a takoyaki stand. And uh, she's like, I came back here to train. And the whole time we see the the cook behind the stand. We see yes. like his reactions. He's just kind of like, oh, okay, can you please move on? I got to sell takoyaki. But then Not suddenly impressed. he's like, mm, like his eyes get really big. And we pull out and we see like Ch- Ch- Usagi's like on fire. Flames, flames on the yes. side of my face. Yes. She's like, I'm on a date with Mamoru. <laughs> and Chibi pauses for two seconds and then. She hugs Mamoru and she's looking right at Usagi. She's like, he's my mama. I know. Bitch. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> Usagi's like, ah. And they start fighting over him. And he's like, wait, let's eat takoyaki. Silence. It's like he knows chewing. what the magic <laughs> thing is. immediately smash to them all chewing on a bench. Like for both of them? Not like, on the bench, but yeah. No, the, the magic thing is like food. Like that food in these mouths. Yeah, you get instantly stop both of them from fighting. They're well, it backfires like that way. on him because Chibi's like, "I'll feed you, Mama Chan," but he's like, "He's like, no me," and they start no. jamming takoyaki into him. <laughs> it's I feel so bad for him. We hear I almost mistook you for a happy family, and we uh-huh. see Haruka and Michiru, uh-huh. small district. Yeah, they are in a beautiful traditional dress. Haruka is of course in the man's kimono. Mm-hmm. Chibi says, "So beautiful, like mommy and daddy." Uh-huh. And Usagi's like, now, now, despite how it looks, Haruka is a woman. <laughs> okay. He, don't don't be that kind of ally. Yeah. Usagi, right, okay? The right. one who's going to explain everything to everybody. We I, know, we appreciate you're on board, but it, we're all going to figure it out. Go a little less hard. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, okay. Usagi adds, oh, and by the way, <laughs> your mommy in the future is me. And Chibi's like, yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> I mean, Mamo, I can see. Sure. But you? And this time, Mamoru is choking on all the takoyaki. He's back there going like, I think this has been happening the entire time. We're just seeing it now. (laughs) He finally gets up and says, that's enough. Michiru says, well, we're going for tea. Why don't you come with? And Mamoru is about to say, no, thanks. But Usagi says, yes, let's get tea and cakes and cookies and custard. Mm -hmm. Is Tokyo just like the state fair? Why do you ask that? Because I figure like where I live, first of all, where I live, there isn't a ton of food. Mm-hmm. And I live in one of the major metropolitan areas in America. It's just, it's kind of a food desert mm-hmm. uh, for a lot of reasons. You know, one of which being closings because of the pandemic. Yes. But it just doesn't seem to be a priority to give people fun things to eat. But if I just like got my shoes on and I went outside, I would not be able to just get a bunch of fun treats mm-hmm. unless I walked 16 blocks to Candyland, I could get some caramel corn. Yeah. Um, but I can't just get like a crepe or like some tea or a, or ice cream sundae. I would have to like get a meal at every restaurant that I went to or just order one thing. And it just seems like there's a lot of street food. And I wish that that was, that existed here. It's like the state fair. I don't know that that's always. Oh, just a cartoon. The, 
pace. Today I learned it's just a cartoon. A hundred percent of the time. Okay, now to be fair, I was only in Tokyo for like a long weekend, so I'm like not super familiar with Tokyo. I'm not saying that I am by. But any are means. other major cities like that? Um, there is a fair amount of street food. However, I don't feel like it's like. On every, you know, like there's certain areas yeah. that are known for it. Like I've definitely, um, you know, been out shopping and then like there's like a couple of gyoza stalls and it's like, ooh, gyoza, let's yeah. get some gyoza, you know, and it wasn't part of like a matsuri or anything like that. Like the... the We barely have hot dog vendors here. That's true. That's a, but that's a thing in New York City, but it's not a thing where we Yeah, live. I feel like New York, you could probably get some roasted nuts or, yeah, or get, I mean, a I slice guess of pizza or something. I see what you're saying. It's probably more on par with like New York as far as like street food goes, if, if maybe even like more, you know? So it, I, I mean, I guess there's more street food than your average like American Is it a Midwest city. thing? Because even like Chicago is like, there's just nothing, there's nothing like that really. Yeah, I'm trying Maybe to... Maybe it's cold. Well, New York's cold, New York's though. cold, though, too. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Well, don't anyway, either. bring it bring it back. Yeah. Street vendors. Yeah. Come on. Let's do everybody. it. Everybody, it's yeah. a pandemic. Yeah. It's time. It's, it's over now. Come on. This is pathetic. Uh, I mean, there is... Eat, eat food from a stranger's hands. Yeah. <laughs> I, there there are food trucks. That's a thing. Yeah, there. that's not what we're looking for. Okay. Though. All right. <laughs> you imagine that they're just eating at food trucks all the time. Usagi's yeah. like broke. She's working three jobs to try to pay for all the food they have to eat from food trucks. <laughs> uh, we cut to a traditional Japanese garden and a traditional Japanese house. And mm-hmm. all five of them are sitting on the floor in the traditional Japanese way. Mm-hmm. Out comes the cute kid from before and Chibi psyched. Mm-hmm. Michiru introduces him as head tea master Tomasaburo mm-hmm. of the Yaburakoji Burakoji family. Uh-huh. Saburo so bows and the others do in return. And Chibi's thinking, this one's okay. This is destiny. I know, I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the basement lab, Dr. Giggle sits traditionally as well uh-huh. in a gray kimono. And he's listening to taiko music, I think. I don't yeah. know where it's coming from because they lost their taiko demon last episode. <laughs> this is a tape, maybe. Yeah, it's not soya. <laughs> yeah. He is boiling water apparently to make tea. And he says, tea soothes the soul. And we see him whisk the matcha into the hot water. He enjoys the aroma. Then he pours the entire thing down his gullet and spits it right back out. <laughs> he throws the cup aside like, oh, it's hot, hot, hot. I mean, to be fair, he drank it too quickly. Why would you drink it that fast? <laughs> Dr. Giggles has got a lot more personality now. He does. Yeah. And I swear to God, he's heating the water with a Bunsen burner. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Just put an egg in there. And just, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, now he says, oh, I've got an idea. And we cut to the Witch's Five office. He's on the phone with Udile. And she says, oh, tea, you say. I have found an appropriate subject. Mm-hmm. And we see on her computer that it's Saburo. Mm-hmm. Dr. G says, I'll prepare a demon to match. And we see the montage of the machines working, the evil microwave infusing the item. And we hear a voice scream, Chagaba! Yep. And the star box goes in the star car. <laughs> and Udial drives out of an in-use runway <laughs> and speeds off. I know! Like, yeah, we're going to touch down Oh, my God! <laughs> Is there a station wagon on uh, runway five? But this is fun. This is like a, a new gag. I feel like it's going to be a different thing oh, each yeah. time. They'll be coming so. out. Yeah. <laughs> the delivery room. <laughs> I can. All right. It's crowning. Like in a hospital. Beep, beep. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> no. Back at the tea house, everybody is watching the master prepare the tea, but Usagi and Chibi's feet are going numb from sitting. Mm -hmm. Haruka slides a bowl of dumplings in front of Chibi, and she's like, oh, yeah. And she starts chowing down, Mm -hmm. but Usagi's like, ahem, look. And we see Haruka gracefully sliding the Odongo off the skewers one by one and cutting them in half daintily. Mm -hmm. Chibi is embarrassed to have violated protocol in this way in front of her crush. And Usagi laughs at her, but Chibi punches Usagi's numb foot behind her back. Yeah, I <laughs> and know. And Usagi's like, ooh, ah, mm, ooh. <laughs> but she finally recovers and sits up and all is normal. Mm-hmm. Until she and Chibi both punch each other in the feet. And I they're know. both like, ooh, ah, ow, 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 ow. <laughs> It's a, it's it's funny. This is a this is a funny one. This episode. Saburo says, "If you're uncomfortable, it's okay to sit normally." But they're both like, "Okay, <laughs> we're all right. We can do it." <laughs> he says, "Check this out," and he starts balancing a teacup on top of his ladle. He's uh-huh. like, "Whoa, whoa!" Yeah. And everybody's like, "What?" <laughs> Michiru says, 
How considerate he is performing to relax you. That teacup is a national treasure that's worth millions. Hey, buddy. That doesn't relax me. No, I don't. <laughs> Broken glass does not relax me. No. Uh, and neither are they. Uh, Usagi's like, millions? You got the tea, you got tea cup, you gotta <laughs> take the cup and you got to come on! <laughs> and she wobbles over on her numb legs to grab the cup and she falls and the cup flies up in the air. And instantly, <laughs> why doesn't a rose hit it? Uh, Mamoru, Haruka, and Michiru all leap forward to catch it. And they do, three-way style, not what you think. Yeah. And the cup that we found out about just 20 seconds ago is fine. Yes. <laughs> Thank God. They saved it. Unfortunately, they're all standing on Usagi. I know! Later, at a cafe, because Tokyo is the state fair, apparently, <laughs> Usagi, Mamoru, and Chibi are having even more treats mm -hmm. at a cafe. And Chibi is pissed, because Usagi embarrassed her in front of her crush. Usagi says, well, you embarrassed me in front of Haruka and Michiru. Yeah. And little note here, in the background of the cafe, we see a couple. And I think the guy yeah. is proposing to the girl, oh, because he's got that. a ring box. Oh! And she's like, oh! And we cut back, and Mamoru is just... Looking at them out of the corner of his eye with, like, this look on his face, like, huh. <laughs> Really? Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. That's so fascinating. He's not even, like, looking at the girls. But then he says, uh, so uh, you like uh, Tom Saburo, huh? And Chibi says, Mommy told me to make lots of tw friends in the 20th century. It's a good way to have valuable acquaintances. <laughs> so she is. She's doing a Terminator. She is. Because, You're absolutely right. Because she's sending her back in time. To get friends who presumably will be friends in the future for her? Well, and will, also Will they to... just appear suddenly? She comes back to the future and she goes to her surprise birthday party and there's like, hmm. <laughs> there's a tea guy, an right. adult tea man, right. a guy with his pants around his ankles. Oh, let's, no, not him. You're not invited, <laughs> sir. I'm it's sorry. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, we were going to invite you. Oh, that's right. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Uh, next time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's, like, the idea that, like, they will just magically also be her friends in the future. Like, the anime doesn't depict exactly, or do they? I thought, like, the millennium was, like, it's a thousands it's of probably years not, in the future. Right, right. But, yeah, but what I'm, yeah. But, I mean, they might. So, all, are all the millennium people in the future future people? Was it just the Tsukino family that was, like, and the sailors that were frozen? Because Earth is like th weird and different, and there's yeah. and, and you're being careful now because there's things you can't say. But there is something is something has happened to well, Earth. Neo Queen Serenity has done something to Earth, and like I every... want you to talk because you're going to ruin. No, stuff. but like everybody <laughs> lives longer, right? But okay, but like you know, maybe so... these people could be alive. In the I, I think that the, the that's... point is is that I just yeah. got done saying that they can't change the future because it's it's already happened. But uh, but that's okay. True. Um, it's good for her to get this practice. I think Usagi, like, Neo Queen Serenity is, like, you know, thinking about her, how she had all these valuable friends, the Senshi, and she wants that for her daughter, too. Who, who, that don't exist in her own future. She has no peers in the future. Yeah. Mamoru says, well, Mamoru says, you don't have many playmates in the future. But now, you know some adult perverts. No, I didn't say that. Oh, no! <laughs> See, because they would be perverts in the, in the future. Uh, no. Usagi says, uh, if you had told us, we could have helped you. But Chibi says, you would have just complicated things, which is hard to argue with. Yeah. Usagi's mad, but Mamoru says, okay, now make up, you two. And Usagi extends her hand, and Chibi takes it, and they're like, hmm. <laughs> Smash cut to Chibi walking down the street in full traditional dress. She's on her way to become Thomas Aburo's apprentice. Uh -huh. And Usagi and Luna are walking with her just to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's Usagi's kimono from when she was young. I think so, yeah. And now I know that Kids Are Us in Japan must be crazy. Why is that? Isn't Kids Are Us like used kids clothes, right? Or Is that right? Yeah, they have like consignment stuff. They have new stuff, but also they, they have do, like new stuff. They do stuff. have new stuff and they yeah. do have new so stuff. So it's just so. going to be like traditional hero. How about these child hakama? Yeah. Worn twice. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Right. No, you're absolutely right because they are so expensive. Yeah. yeah. What, what, show me your Netsuke. What do you got for Netsuke? <laughs> As they fight over the kimono, they're almost hit by a white station wagon. And uh -huh. Usagi and Chibi see that you dial at the wheel, apparently mm -hmm. heading for the tea house. Chibi sneaks through a hole in the hedges, and she and Luna bolt off to defend Tamasaburo. But Usagi is stuck in the hole, and a bird lands on her butt. Yes. <laughs> Sailor Moon. Udile crashes into the serene garden, and Tamasaburo appears and says, Can I help you? But Udile blasts out his heart crystal. 
Chibi transforms as she runs, even tripping and falling on her butt. Can't stop her. Mm -hmm. She throws herself in front of Tamasaburo and says, I won't let you take his heart. I am the pretty guardian trainee who fights for love and justice. Sailor Chibi Moon. As she's yelling this, Udile just says like, Demon, come out. Get out here. (laughs) I need you. And Chibi says, in the name of the future moon, I'll punish you. Udile's like, what? (laughs) What did you you say? I'll punish you. (laughs) Out of the back of the car steps, or rather floats, a green woman in traditional dress. Mm -hmm. She shouts, Chagama! Yeah. And Udile says, get rid of her. Chagama says, boil and bubble, and lassos Chibi to the ground. Mm -hmm. But a world shaking comes flying at Udile as she dodges out of the way, followed by a deep submerge that destroys Chibi's bonds. Neptune and Uranus are here. Chibi thanks them, but Uranus says, I'm not here for you. I know! And Neptune says, "Uh, this isn't a talisman. And hearing this, Udile gets back in her car and says, yeah, you uh, do the thing, and you did, just do the, yeah, just take him out. And she drives off. (laughs) I know. Chagama turns to face her attackers, but she and Chibi see that the other sailors are gone, Mm -hmm. as well as Tom Suburo. Mm -hmm. Wasting no time, Chibi fires off a pink sugar heart attack. Or at least she tries. She does. Her hearts kind of fall short of the demon. I know. So Chibi starts, Chibi starts like edging closer and closer. I know. So her hearts start like, will hit the monster. I love it. And Chagama just sips her tea saying, ah, why she? I know. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> hit in the face with hearts by Chibi's attack. Mm-hmm. And Luna and Usagi arrive and Usagi transforms into Sailor Moon. She says, leave the rest to me. The wait is over. The real thing is here. In the name of the moon, I'll punish you. But Chibi's like, you're late, clumsy moon. But Chagma smacks her to the ground. Oh, there's going to be a lot, a lot. Speaking of child abuse. I know. Every episode. Oh, you got to die, Chagma. <laughs> Chagma flies at Sailor Moon while whisking her tea, saying, let me show you my hospitality. <laughs> As she shoots presumably acid tea at Sailor Moon as she dodges out of the way. And then, more pink hearts hit her in the face. Mm -hmm. Chagma starts throwing tea everywhere. Sailor Moon picks up Chibi Moon and they hightail it. But they're stopped short at the garden fence. And just as Chagma is about to scald them with evil tea, (laughs) Chibi hits her in the face again. Chagma says, all right, this will be my final hospitality. And as she prepares to throw the entire bowl at them, a red rose knocks the bowl from her hand to be spilled on the ground. Mm -hmm. Tuxedo Mask is here and he says, warm-hearted hospitality that treasures a moment of feeling is the true essence of tea ceremony. You've trampled on that spirit. Unforgivable. I know. Also, I'm just like behind a fence, but he's like, head is over the fence. Yeah. So there are three cardboard boxes. There's a trash can below him. (laughs) Yes. He's standing in a trash it. can. Chagma says, it's time to show my true hospitality and starts taking off her clothes. I'm like, what is happening in this show? Everybody's taking their clothes off. Now we're getting somewhere. Oh, my goodness. Tuxedo Mask says, uh, now, Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and we get an MSHA and the half-naked demon is no more. Yeah. And is once again a teapot. Yes. Chibi says, I, uh, I wanted to say thank you. And from the bushes, we see Neptune and Thomas Aburo in Uranus's arms. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the kid, not both of them. <laughs> she is strong, though. She Uranus, might be able to do that. <laughs> Uranus says, uh, the little one did pretty well. And Saburo says, kakui. Yep. Later, Chibi is once again on her way to the tea house to really start her apprenticeship. But as they approach, they see Haruna and Michiru scurrying away from the building. Mm-hmm. When they go in, they see there's been some changes around here. Yep. Thomas Aburo emerges. He's exchanged his traditional clothes for a green and white sailor fuku. Mm-hmm. He says, I found a new way of tea through the guardians I saw in my dreams. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm the pretty headmaster of etiquette and practice. I am sailor Thomas Aburo. Yay. I know. And he poses with his bowl and tea ladle. And we see Usagi and Chibi run out of the building. I Guess you guys aren't ready for that yet. But your kids are going to love it. <laughs> that I'd, I'd wrap up with this another back to the future joke <laughs> okay i think that that's i think that's good i think that's really good look i got a lot of time travel jokes to give that's awesome i i'm ready for them we're gonna have a lot of and limericks sure. too yeah yes okay there once was a woman named bright who could travel faster than light okay she went out one day in a relative way and came back the previous night <laughs> i love it <laughs> 
That's awesome. All right. I'm, this is like a sideshow. Let's just move on. Let's okay. talk about the episode. Okay. Uh, can we start by talking about uh, Thomas Saburo dressing as a sailor and like their reaction to it? I was just like, what are they? Do, are they just not okay with a, a boy wearing a sailor fuku? <sighs> or is it them? Is it Thomas Saburo em- emulating them that they feel uncomfortable with? What is going on here? Let's talk about yeah. allyship. Yes. Because I think it's, <laughs> we have forced it to come up. It kind of yeah. comes up. Uh, this show has proven again and again, mm-hmm. through and through, yeah. that th- they're fine with whatever. No matter what Deacon Cloverway does to the show, yes. <laughs> Japanese Sailor Moon is down with everything. I think so. But you can't, you can't redo, you, uh, I mean, you have to be careful, you know, how you're portraying things. But I think it's okay for them to be shocked at the great change in this character sure right like he's already this mysterious figure and they're just coming to to expect one thing and he comes out you know dressed like a sailor soldier and he's like i'm gonna be the tea guy yay i know and and so i mean you can interpret it as like oh they're weirded out that he's like girl clothes Uh but i don't the, the history of these characters i i mean i think that Usagi. <laughs> what? Let's talk about allyship. Yeah. Let's uh, do it. Usagi reminds me uh, no, not only of me, uh, mm-hmm. younger me, mm-hmm. but also people I know who are like, oh, what? And then, no, oh, what? And it takes them a while, but then they <laughs> finally kind of get it, uh-huh. right? And then the next phase is them, you know, telling everybody about <laughs> how, how, how much they get it. Because oh, it's it's, a girl. it's ego repair is what it is, okay, right? It's sure. like I unconsciously feel bad that I misgendered somebody that I sure. presumed a gender or that I ass- assume that somebody's orientation. Mm-hmm. But I and I'm not a bad I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad person, right? And I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. Mm-hmm. And so they and I'm not like we're putting a lot on a kids' cartoon here. We are, but we're talking about allyship. And so I think their reaction is to you know go a little a little too far with it. Mm-hmm. Until hopefully they settle down one day, and it's like, yeah, right, so and so. So here, here's another thing. Right before uh, Usagi and Shibuya arrive, we see Haruka and. Oh, are you talking about sneaking away? All right, right. But I'm like, are we? <laughs> but let's make sure that we're talking about the same thing. Are you just talking about the logistics of how did this kid? Get a sailor? Does he have sailor powers now? How did no, he no, get no, 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 no. I'm talking. Or are about... you talking about the fact that? traditionally well it, the tradition is not involved uh we wouldn't want our main character to be like oh he's wearing girl clothes that is the main thing and and i'm also upset or worried about like haruka and michiru who are lgbtq themselves sneaking away uncomfortably oh you think it was uncomfortable i thought that they were like oh okay all right so okay i i did not interpret it that way okay but now i think that's that's what it is. Okay. And so if the LGBTQ characters did it, it's fine, right? <laughs> I think it's supposed to just I think in in ter- they're not making this in the 90s thinking about how we are still struggling today right. for acceptance for people with non-traditional lifestyles. Mm-hmm. There's that word again. Right. And so yeah, I think that your your interpretation of why they're running away is totally correct. Okay. We just don't see it because they're not our main characters. And mm-hmm. it's but I think that the whole thing is written for the sting. We need some kind of button at the end of the episode. I think you're probably right. They came up with this idea where, you know, he's gonna become the sailor of tea, which is funny. It is funny. But but we've gotta have our characters react to that, and so this is them falling over and their legs are in the air and a big swipe drop. No, you're right. And I don't think that I think it can be read like, oh, they don't like that he's, you know, wearing a, a, a skirt or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that it, that was intended. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to talk about it because I think it's yeah. important. Yeah, and, it is. Um, you know, especially so, because there are sometimes like- And because there's... companies like Cloverway probably cut that scene out entirely, you've got a whole generation of kids who have to get over the fact that people have different lifestyles. And spend a lot of time being the <laughs> the character like Usagi. Um, I want to talk about Usagi really fast. Let's do it. In Just in connection with this. Yeah. I don't... I think that she's a good person. Yeah. But I think that she is the patient zero 
for the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Okay. You know, she is very traditional. Yeah. She's, you know, do <laughs> you hate trad wife? I'll bring that idea back. I, she I wants don't her like romantic it. boyfriend. Yeah. She, you know, she doesn't think about uh, if her friends and their, their lifestyles are different than hers. Well, and yeah, so, that's true. And I don't think that once she learns and she assimilates that information, she's never discriminatory. She's never, she always accepts them. Yeah. But she's, you know, she gets caught up by stuff like this. Mm-hmm. And I think that's okay, especially in a fiction, as long as we, it's it's kind of a, a mean trick to put this at the very end because we never see her then accept it and it doesn't become right. instructive for the kids that watch it. The it, only takeaway that they have is that she is shocked and horrified by this. Bad example, but this is my particular idiom that I bring to this show. Mm-hmm. The comic, the far, the far side. Okay. Wow. From the eighties and nineties. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming. <laughs> has uh, the guy uh, Gary Larson has uh, written a lot about the acceptance of his blockbuster strip that was a huge thing for a long time, and it probably has completely disappeared because he kind of refuses to embrace the internet. But he has a strip called Tether Cat. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. It's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 two dogs with a cat, you know, uh, tied to a rope, and they're you know batting the cat around the pole like tetherball. Yeah, do people know what tetherball is? Uh, yeah, people know what tetherball is. Okay. Of course, the playground still exists. All right, in Trump's America. Oh my god! Uh, but uh, and so uh, it's it's of questionable taste. Uh, yes. Nobody came to the far side asking them to be the paragon of taste, but it is in questionable taste. But you get the joke. The joke is. You know, cats hate dogs. How do we take that? You know, Tom and Jerry like cut each other's limbs off and stuff like sure, that. I mean, that's course. not They're great either, but we get great. that it's an exaggeration of the conflict between cats and dogs. Yeah. But he makes a point when he was, Gary Larson was thinking, you know, looking back at his comics and writing about them. He made the point that like the problem with a single panel comic and a still medium is that mm. it is this forever. So when Tom, you know, puts his hand in the mousetrap hole and he, ah! He pulls it out and there's a mouse trap and his fingers are, you know, glowing or whatever. Yeah. And then later on he ties Jerry up and puts an apple in his mouth because he's gonna cook them. They always get out of what it is and then we see them again. In fact, that's the entire itchy and scratchy formula here, is that it right. will always continue. Yes. But like Tether Cat, you can look at Tether Cat and go, I don't know about that. Put it down, do something else, come back hours later, they're still playing Tether Cat. There is no dynamic. The cat is always that's true. You know, just being physically abused by these dogs, no right. matter what the joke is. Yeah. And so in this situation, like this is the button that they came up with. Like I said, I don't think that there's anything particularly wrong with it, but it will, this character will never return. Yeah. This will be the right. very last impression that we get of this character. Right. Him doing something that nobody else in the show has ever done, which is b- become like a a sailor associate, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I don't right, know, if, like right. I said, I don't know if he has powers, but like he is like a, an auxiliary sailor. Yeah. And, uh, and Usagi's only, re- the title character's only reaction is like, Ugh. <laughs> I feel uncomfortable no. and I'm leaving now. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and like you said, that bad look, right. That's what we end on. And that's what I don't like about it. And, to- and this is an episode where a kid shows his dick to another kid. I know. And then this is what we're talking <laughs> but about. But this is, yeah, this is what we're left with. Um, Why didn't we go back I'd- to that kid? Uh, <laughs> do you want, do you want to talk about what that is now? Yeah. Or do you want to save it for trivia? Yeah, no, let's do it now. Let's do it now. What is okay. that? What is okay. going on? Uh, the kid's name who uh, pantses himself is <laughs> named uh, Shinosuke uh, and his elephant his Chinchan doll and his mother's appearance were all references to another TV Asahi anime called Cran Shinchan. Oh. And yes, uh, and uh, it, there's more, there's layers. Uh, <laughs> the bed, not, not on the kid. No, no, I know, right? <laughs> Shinosuke was voiced by the same voice actress as Shinosuke Shinchan Nohara. So the character in this episode was given given the same full first name as Shinchan from Crayon Shinchan. Uh, he just, his name gets shortened to Shinchan. And his mother was voiced by the same voice actress as Shinchan's mother. So it was a little cameo reference sort of deal to what and i guess it's funny to people well at the time yeah well i'll get to it so the, is this, this like when like fraser shows up on friends sure or no what is it like phoebe wasn't phoebe's sister 
like a waitress at Fraser's coffee shop. I or think something it was like that. something like yeah. that, and it was like her twin, and it was just yeah, Lisa Kudrow. Um, weaving these these mythologies on musty musty TV. Right, right. So like God, we had nothing to worry about. I, in the 90s. I know um, <laughs> nothing at all. <laughs> no. So, but the the Sailor Moon voice actors also did cameos in episode one hundred and nine of Cran Shinchan. Oh, so it's an so exchange. It is an exchange. Should we be watching Cran Shinchan? Yes, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Oh, but right. so Aya Hisakawa or Ami, Emi Shinohara or Mako, and Kai Araki or Chibiusa appear as Sailor Ian, Sailor Bakaan, and Sailor Mufon, respectively. Uh, Ian means oh, no, or don't in Japanese. I think that Bakaan is most likely a play on Baka, which means fool or idiot. And Mufun, I think, is supposed to be like buffoon, but with like an M for moon. Um, that's just my interpretation. But according to the Shinchan Wikipedia page in episode 109, quote, Shinchan sees Action Mask performing live and feels happy and honored. Uh Cran Shinchan is a manga series written and illustrated by Yoshito Usui, and an anime adaptation began in 1992. It is still ongoing today. And on several television networks worldwide, it has over a thousand episodes and 26 full length movies. The show has been dubbed in 30 languages and has aired in 45 countries. It is one of the longest running anime ever. For anime with the most episode, it ranks number 14. Case Closed or Detective Conan is ranked at 15 and One Piece comes in at 16, just to give you a rough idea. Wow. And Shinchan frequently moons other characters and he does the elephant dance where he draws an elephant's face around his penis while dancing around and singing the Japanese children's song Zosan or Mr. Elephant. And this infuriates his mother. A very offensive anime. Yeah. And right. it's for kids. It's for little kids. So. Well, you know, that's, you know, good. Whatever. I don't care. <laughs> that's what, that's what care. that is. Let's not <sighs> demonize our bodies. Isn't that how we got into this mess in the first place? <laughs> it's, I think it's supposed to be fun and, and like silly. But... Have we talked about Bishop before? I don't know what you're, you're talking about. Bishop is a Marvel Comics character. Oh. He is an X-Man. Uh-huh. And he is from the future. Mm-hmm. He was invented by Chris Claremont, and I'm going to say Will Spertaccio, probably the artist. And he, it's kind I mean, it's, if like Harlan Ellison, like, you know, sued James Cameron for the Terminator, like James Cameron's got a, got a case here. Uh huh. But essentially he was sent back. He's from the future where all, all mutants are dead, or at least most of them are dead. He is a mutant himself, Mm -hmm. but, and he's part of a mutant police force, but the X-Men themselves uh, were, were killed long ago. Mm -hmm. And it it has become this legend. And he's always looked up to the X-Men. They Mm -hmm. have become like these legendary figures, tragic figures. Sure. And there's one X-Men left. Well, I'm kind of giving it away, but it becomes clear. Uh, only the X-Men Gambit has survived into the future. Oh, And he my knows goodness. something. But he's an old man now, very old. Uh-huh. And so Bishop is like trying to like, tell me what happened to the X-Men. And so Bishop first appears in the comic. He just steps out of a time portal and he's like there to do something. He's chasing a time traveling criminal. Okay. And he immediately gets into a fight with the X-Men. Of course. And he's like, you guys aren't the real X-Men. You know, they're, you were 10 feet tall and, he, you know, you were... Uh, you had a million different powers and stuff like that. And they're like, no, we're beating you up right now. We're the X-Men. <laughs> and eventually he gets stranded in the past and he has to start like getting used to the fact that his heroes, like these people that he remembers uh, mm. from the stories are like these real people. Okay. Um, Brian Michael Bendis kind of stole this uh, recently because he took the original X-Men from the past and brought them to the future. Okay. So they had to sort of like reckon with the people that they would become in the future. Okay. You can do anything in comics. Oh, yeah. And so this reminds me of, like, Bishop in a, in a way because, you know, it's this character who is sent back in time and has expectations about, you know, what had happened previously. Mm-hmm. But is really, like, having to come to terms with being in this in, in this earlier century. Yeah. You know, it's like Outlander. Sure. You know, it's like this character's like, oh, boy, they had it so good back then, bagpipes and no underwear. Right, And right, then she right. gets back there and she's like, 
Well, I was like, I can't do anything as a woman, can I? I yeah. just have to sit here. Yeah. Fantastic. And people get mad so when I mad. try to do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I like these stories where a character's out of time. It's a temporal isekai. I do. It is. It is. That's and it. Bishop is a temporal isekai. Oh, That's what I'm here to say. I like that. That 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 uh, that sounds good. <laughs> Your Honor, a courtroom is a crucible. In it, we burn away irrelevances until we are left with a pure product, the truth, for all time. Oh, man, now, this is so intense. Data is on trial for his life. Like Shh, I know. This episode, The Measure of a Man, is based on the Supreme Court's Dred Scott decision of 1857. And every week on Backtracking, we take a look at the real-world events that inspired classic Star Trek episodes. Sorry. Shut up! Who are you? <laughs> We're the hosts of Backtracking. I'm Caliban. You will both be taken to the brig and from there to the nearest star base, where you will answer charges for what you have done. And I'm Gooey Fame. This is not a game. This is life and death. You, you follow us on Twitter. Backtracking is available wherever you listen to podcasts. You go f*** yourself. <laughs> Today on Kuro Kuro Miru, or Curiously Looking Around, where we talk about elements of Japanese culture within the episode, we are going to talk about the Japanese tea ceremony. The Japanese tea ceremony, known as Sado or Chado, or the Way of Tea, or Cha no Yu, is a traditional form of tea ceremony and a Japanese cultural activity involving the ceremonial preparation and presentation of matcha, which is powdered green tea, right. uh, the art of which is called o te mai. Zen Buddhism was a primary influence in the development of Japanese tea ceremony. That's very important. There's a lot of spiritual elements involved. Uh, okay. Um, tea gatherings are classified as either an, an informal tea gathering called uh, chakai or tea gathering. So cha means tea in, in Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, or a formal tea gathering, chaji or tea event. Chakai is a relatively simple course of hospitality that includes confections, thin tea, and sometimes a light meal. Uh, chakai is what we see in the episode, and it's what is most commonly practiced uh, of the two gatherings, um, even though it is less formal. <laughs> it's just a tea hangout. Yeah, it's just hanging to be, out with tea. Yeah, in in the correct course of things, just <laughs> hanging out with tea. Uh, Chaji is a much more formal gathering, usually including a full course kaiseki, uh, which is a traditional multi-course Japanese dinner, followed by confections, thick tea, and then thin tea. Uh, chaji may last up to four hours, so it's uh, much more formal. I'm, I'm intrigued by this thick and thin tea. So there are two main ways to prepare matcha for, for tea consumption for the tea ceremony. Thick is known as koi cha and thin usu cha, uh, with the best quality tea leaves used in preparing the thick tea. Um, Historically, the tea leaves used as packing material for the koicha leaves in the tea urn uh, would be served as thin tea. So thin tea is, is it's just um, the tinier bits of matcha. Yeah. Um, as the, the term implies, koicha is a, a thick blend of matcha and and uh, hot water that requires about three times as much tea to the equivalent amount of water than usucha. Uh, to prepare usucha, matcha, and hot water are whipped using the tea whisk or chasen, which is made from a single piece of bamboo. Uh, with, while uh, koicha is kneaded with the whisk to smoothly blend the large amount of powdered tea with the water. Hmm. Um so um, something, I guess, so I did like an online uh, matcha class like a little over a year or so ago. And you want to be really gentle with your chasen, which my instructor did not inform us because <laughs> it is, it's made out of bamboo. 
Um, and it, it does need to be replaced after it's used um, a number of times. But I feel like I bent mine a little. I was a little too rough because I was like, <laughs> I really want to mix this matcha together. He's grinding this matcha. I, and it's like, you know, it, it is like something that you learn over time. And like, you know, they say, oh, it's all in the wrist. I mean, I think that would imply be be used here. There's a way to do it right. to get the froth really going and to really mix it. And I think when you make this this thick tea you want to kind of um gently uh get the matcha going and gently you know they, they say knead it so like you're not like it's you're not crushing it right. with the whisk right so um thin tea is so there's a different way that it's served as well thin tea is served to each guest in an individual bowl so and these are these are bowls these are not cups um, and while one bowl of thick tea is shared among several guests. So the way you usually uh, serve thick tea is one guest will take a sip. Um, and then there is this, this cloth, which I can't remember the name of. I think it's like a silk cloth that you use and you, you wipe your lip prints from the bowl. Right. And the next person will out also turn the bowl just slightly so they're not drinking exactly from where you drank <laughs> right and and it continues but i kind of wonder how um after covid if how this will be practiced <laughs> if people will approach it the same way that was new, just something that bowl. went through my head <laughs> yeah so they're using uh uh cups uh, paper cups. Yeah, right. With uh, poker uh, on the bottom, and you can look up and go. Oh, right, nah. like or or like. Sadly, I did not win. Yeah, or like yes, it takes longer to make the thick tea, but I guess we'll just make everybody an individual bowl, even right. though it's more matcha and more water. <laughs> Anyways, so chado is counted as one of the three classical arts of refinement in Japan, Ooh. along with kodo for incense appreciation and kado for flower arrangement. Around the end of the 12th century, the style of tea preparation called tensha, in which powdered matcha was placed into a bowl, hot water added, and the tea and hot water were whisked together, was introduced to Japan by Buddhist monk uh, Eisai um, on his return from China. Hmm. So I also wanted to mention there it's interesting because um, I'm I'm doing a shortened version of the history, obviously, yeah, but yeah. Um, you can read about it. But like I, one thing I wanted to mention is that tea was not natively grown in Japan. They got it from China. Was like, oh, what's this? I really like this, and it was brought back. <laughs> um, so uh, I think that that is important to understand for for the history of this. But um. So uh, ASI also took tea seeds back with him, which he eventually produced tea out from, and it was considered to be the most superb quality in all of Japan. But uh, this powdered green tea was first used in religious rituals in Buddhist monasteries. So again, we're getting the Buddhist spiritual element here. Sure. By the 13th century, when the Kamakura shogunate ruled the nation and tea uh, and luxuries associated with it became a status symbol among the warrior class. Uh, those across tocha or, or tea tasting parties, wherein contestants could win extravagant prizes for guessing the best quality tea. So <laughs> the way I imagine it is we have uh, a flight uh, of different qualities of tea. And then right, you right, have right. to guess which is uh, the best quality tea from from taste and texture, Ooh, the aroma, you know, uh, and then you get a prize. This is potentially the most annoying thing in the world. Yeah, it, potentially. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of people. It's like craft beer. He's like, mm, I can taste the hops. I, uh, yeah, mm, I know. Is, it, is that coriander? <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, in the Muromachi period, which was uh, 1333 to 1568, uh, members of the samurai and nobility often held uh, chakai, which at the time were luxurious feasts where guests enjoyed, enjoyed bowls of matcha. Um, and these were often really noisy parties where a lot of sake was also oh. <laughs> drinking. And you know what's, what's good with tea? Sake. sake. Like a lot of sake. A lot of sake. 
Uh, and these were occasions for the upper class to display special items from their collection, which included imported ceramics from China, hanging scrolls, paintings, and expensive tea utensils. Uh, Murata Shuko, tea master of the Muromachi shogunate Ashikaga Yoshimasa, put a stop to the drinking of sake, gambling, and other overindulgences that characterized Chakai at the time and encouraged wabicha style of the tea ceremony, which emphasizes simplicity and spirituality. So get that sake out of my tea ceremony. Attendance went way down. <laughs> By the 16th century, tea drinking had spread to all levels of society in Japan. Sen no Riku, a monk, uh, and his work Southern Record, perhaps the best known and still revered historical figure in tea. <laughs> that's, that's a skitter. I got that one. Yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. Southern Record. Um, uh, followed his master Takano Ju Jo's concept of Ichigo ichi e which is a philosophy that means each meeting should be treasured for it can never be reproduced. This is a tent pole of the tea ceremony. This is very important. You will never again be with these people in this meeting at this time. Huh. So cherish it. It is all about being in the moment right. and appreciating everything that you have. And a huge part of the Japanese tea ceremony as well is hospitality. Um, and that the host very meticulously picks everything out just for that particular uh, tea ceremony. <laughs> they, and it's all burned after that. Oh uh, no! <laughs> but if they are familiar with the guests, they will they will sometimes be known to uh, pick out a tea bowl specifically for that guest because they think that that guest will particularly appreciate that oh. bowl. Um, it's it's very fascinating to me, but. Um, uh, Riku's teachings perfected many newly developed forms in, in architecture, gardens, and art, and the full development of the way of tea. Uh, the principles he set forward, there are four main ones, harmony, or wa, respect, k, purity, se, and tranquility, jaku, are still central to Chado today. Mm. Riku was close with Toyotomi Hideyoshi, a samurai and daimyo in the late Sengoku period, regarded as the second great unifier of Japan. So things are um, not necessarily always 100% great, and we're going to get to that. Oh. Uh, Riku's exploration and changes to Chado were initially fully supported by Hideyoshi. Uh, Riku was a respected Chado master uh, throughout his day. However, Hideyoshi's ideas about Chado eventually clashed with Riku's. Um, and he had uh, his own ideas uh, of what tea ceremonies meant and what they should be used for, um, <laughs> were, which were a complete odds with with riku's like you know minimalist approach right uh for hideyoshi since tea was revered and seen as a status symbol uh it had become a way to display power and influence and persuade samurai and noblemen huh Riku, however, was not interested in Chado as a political tool and persistently refined his ideas of spiritual purity and humility, which are, <laughs> are a huge part of the ceremony. Yeah, I'm guessing he's not into that. No. Eventually, their friendship became strained as Hideyoshi began to see uh, Riku as a political barrier. Uh -oh. In 1590, Hideyoshi ordered the execution of one of Riku's disciples. A year later, Hideyoshi ordered Riku, his former tea master, to commit seppuku, or ritual suicide. Uh -oh. Riku obeyed the regent's orders and took his own life. Jeez. And he... Um, actually wrote a death poem that was written to his um, his dagger um, uh, before he took his own life. And it, uh, yeah, it, it, it goes, Welcome to thee, O sword of eternity, through Buddha and through Dar Daruma alike, thou hast cleft thy way. And um, so... It is thought that so Hideyoshi has was known to have a temper, and I don't know what the, all the circumstances were 
leading up to all of this. But it, it is kind of speculated that um, he may have later in his life regretted um, asking Riku to commit seppuku. But regardless, uh, Riku's um, just the way that he approached the tea ceremony has remained and it has not uh, been this, I mean, it's elevated and appreciated, Mm -hmm. but it is not just for nobility. It is for everyone. And I think that that's really important. Who really won in the end? I think Riku won. (laughs) I think the, I think the monk won, man. So Tommy's drinking that tea. He's like, (laughs) it doesn't taste as good. Yeah. Doesn't taste as good. Well, I read something that supposedly he was building a house about a year after the tea master's death. And he was like, I'd like to think that he would appreciate the aesthetics of this. Oh, man. I I wish tea master was here to enjoy this. I know. (laughs) It's like, okay. Um, So I wanted to go through just briefly what a typical chato consists of. Mm -hmm. And, And there are variations on this, of course. But. So guests arrive at the tea house, um, typically are admire the, the, the garden if there is one, and uh, purify their hands and mouths in a stone basin in the garden before entering the tea house, and then shoes are also removed. Um, there is a separate entrance for the host and for the guests in the tea house. Some chai shi tzu have low entrances for guests. This is to str- stress the equal humility of all guests. Sure. Um, and also effectively makes you bow as you enter. Right. Um, so once the guests are, are seated in the uh, saison position, which is the, the traditional position, which we see them sitting in this episode, uh, the host enters the room. In some temai, the, the host brings the tea utensils in with them on a tray. In others, um, they in other temai, they are the utensils are simply laid out on the tatami. Mm-hmm. Um, the water is heated in the ch- chigama or tea kettle before the guests arrive, and the tea is prepared in front of the guests, one bowl at a time, at least for thin tea, which is what's usually done. Right. Uh, so. Um, Guests are served a wagashi, or traditional Japanese sweet, which is to be eaten before they drink the tea. We again see that in this episode. And the idea is that you have something really sweet, and then you're going to have something kind of bitter. Right, right. Um, and a lot of the times they're, they're like uh, sweet, they're filled with sweet bean paste most of the time. Uh, tea bowls are called chawan, and the matcha is scooped into an individual bowl with a bamboo scoop called a uh, chashaku. Um, I believe when I did my matcha class, I think we had to do like three heaping scoops. And like you do it enough, you you. You know what the right amount is. Yeah, right, right. It, it, this is not a measuring spoon. So, um, and uh, water is poured into the bowl with a wooden bamboo ladle and then whisked with a bamboo whisk called the chasan until it is the correct consistency. The host place the bowl in front of a guest. They bow to each other. The guest sips the tea and tells the host how delicious it is. Hmm. Uh the guest is meant to sip the tea slowly, enjoying it, also to admire the bowl and the setting around them. And once everyone has enjoyed their tea, guests are free to admire and ask questions about the tea utensils and the ceremony in general, kind of enjoy each other. So where'd you get your chashu? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and bed, then... Is Bed Bath & Beyond? Or? Yeah, right. <laughs> what, what, what age of bamboo is this made out of? <laughs> um, and then... When it's time to be over, the host gathers their utensils if they brought them in with them, takes them, and goes through their host entrance, closes the door. Um, I believe that the host bows to the guests and the guests bow to the host before they leave. But then uh, the ceremony is officially over and the guests leave. Uh, So, yeah, I think it is important that, you know, tea was not native to Japan, and that may be one reason why it was so valued. Um even though that meaning obviously changed over time. Mm -hmm. Um, It has also been speculated that one reason why the tea ceremony has become so valued as it was highly developed during the warring states period and people were looking for a little piece of tranquility and the other kind, you know, and peace (laughs) during the chaos. That's too many different pieces in there. And Uh, these states, they're just warring all the time. (laughs) 
<laughs> I, I need a break. I, uh, For all uh, these warring get states. Some, get some matcha in me. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I forgot to mention also, the host does not partake. They do not eat the wagashi. <laughs> they do not drink the tea. They are there for hospitality, for serving you. Sure, sure. This is all for you. So, right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, boy, that looks that looks pretty good. <laughs> you, you enjoying that? Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> oh, no, slow, slow down. Um, yeah, it's it's a fascinating thing, and I I just can't. I'm trying to think of something that even compares, you know, in Western society, and I, I'm not coming up with much. Like, you know, the most I can think of is like, you know, with um, particular uh, recipes. Yeah. You know, in like the Western tradition, like if a, a chef has to make something, a dish a certain way. But even that, you've got chefs who are like, we've deconstructed this filet mignon. Right. Which means it's a pile of grass and then a cow's walking by. <laughs> like they're, they're always changing things. And the whole point of this is I'm sure there are some little touches based on the school you're from or your, yeah. or your uh, master. But to change it would be like, what are you doing? Like, don't change right. it. Like it's it, it's a certain way for a certain reason. Yeah. Right, exactly. Um, and this has been passed down. And, and I, I just, I, I, I really appreciate the simplicity of it and everything too. And like the way that the the tea houses were designed was for for guests to really, it to be a tranquil spot and for guests to really focus on the tea. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think that that's, the, there's something so beautiful in that. And I really appreciate it. Uh, and oh gosh, it makes me want to do the tea ceremony again. Uh, itadakimasu with Usagi. What did Usagi eat in this episode? In the park, we see, of course, Mamo buys takoyaki for Usagi and Shibuyusa and himself. Um, and we, we talked about this earlier, but I love that there is one tranquil moment where they're all eating and then it just kind of dissolves into their, their usual chaos. Yeah, right. <laughs> just a taste of what could happen. Yeah. If they could just settle down. Exactly. Exactly. Um... And I, I also wanted to mention Usagi is super excited when Haruka and Michiru invite them to tea because she thinks that they are going to a tea shop or a cafe and that it will be an informal experience and that she will get to have a cake, cookie, or custard with it as well. Right. She is not expecting a, a formal tea ceremony. She wants a piece of cheesecake or something right, like right, that. Right, right, yeah. right. And she maybe should have thought a little bit harder about it because they are you know um uh, wearing kimono they're formally dressed right. <laughs> but but she didn't think about that so the uh the wagashi are are served on a a thin paper called uh kaishi and eaten the the small wooden stick utensil that that is used to eat them is called a yoji so i just wanted to mention that sure really quick as well and then of course they go to another cafe and i think uh, Chibiusa is blowing bubbles into a melon soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, Usagi has an ice cream sundae because I guess they were still hungry after the takoyaki and, I guess. and the tea ceremony. <laughs> so there you yeah, go. funnel cake. And, yeah. yeah, you know, whatever else. Just pile it on there. I love that Mamo's not having anything. Um, <laughs> Villain Gage, we rate a baddie one to five dark stars, five being the most wicked. The daimon in this episode is named Tagama. Yeah. Uh, so her name is a reference to Tagama, the Japanese term for the tea kettle utilized in the Japanese tea ceremony, ah. which, which is the object that the daimon egg went into at the beginning. Right, right. Uh, and the second ah uh, syllable in her name is elongated, uh, Chagama, and it is shorter in the, the name of the tea kettle, Chagama. So that's Chigama. the only difference okay. is, is the, the elongation of that one syllable. Right. So kama or uh, cha means tea, kama or gama means kettle or metal pot. So kama are, are, are made uh, typically of cast iron or copper. These are heavy. Yeah. Um, and they are, you know, used to, to heat the water to, to make tea. Um, so her character design her skin is a matcha green. She's got green lipstick and pointy ears and really long nails. Her hair, which goes over her eyes, and it resembles a chasen or the bamboo whisk um, that is used to make fresh matcha. Um, she's wearing a simple pink kimono, pink kimono 
with a brown obi and she also wears a brown haori uh, with a white zigzag pattern and a white uh, pom-pom on the enclosure and you see that sometimes on enclosures I don't I was trying to figure out what the technical like Japanese name for it is it's not pom-pom but I couldn't find it so, <laughs> I bet they'd like pom-pom though I bet they would That's I, th- I think that they would too uh, it sounds like an onomatopoeia, doesn't it? Um, she takes off her kimono and reveals what I'm going to call a bikini made out of chigama, which has to be the most uncomfortable bikini ever. Um, She's a big Star Wars nerd. It's a metal bikini. Oh, I didn't even see. I didn't pull that. <laughs> no. it's. Not. But you know what it does remind me of? It reminds me of Robin Hood Men in Tights made Marion's uh, metal <laughs> yeah. underwear her her chastity belt. That's yeah. what it reminds me of. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Anyways. Maybe we're not going to get the full hospitality after all. <laughs> yeah, maybe we're not. But she, it seems like she's kind of going there, which is, it kind of makes me like, oh, I don't know how I feel about what she's showing us. But anyways. It's odd. It is odd. What's her plan? I don't know, because it seems <laughs> like that is what her plan is. Um... But then, like, they just kind of stop her before that happens. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. <laughs> uh, she is also sitting on and fo- floating on a zabutan, which is the Japanese cushion for sitting. Right. Um, and she is wearing white tabi, the, the socks with a, a separate toe, high heels, which really weirds me out that they are are. are Tabby high heels. They're it's women first. Very strange. Monsters second. I, I know. I know. Especially with the high heels. Um, Yeah. I'm not insh- sure what she means by she's going to show us her true hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Maybe there's a, a dance uh, portion of this program, you know? <laughs> maybe yeah. Uh, you know, it's like. Uh, maybe she's gonna balance something on her on her ladle or something, but it's it's gonna it's gonna blow up. I know, I know. I guess so. One thing I wanted to mention too is that traditionally speaking, tea ceremonies in Japan were largely done um, almost exclusively by men, but at some point um, that shifted because they were like, oh, we're gonna teach. They started teaching it in schools. A lot of schools have like a, a tea club. Uh, in some way, even if they don't necessarily have a tea house. Okay. Um, and so that's not uncommon. And it was supposed to be like, well, we're going to teach women etiquette and that sort of thing. But now, today, it is largely women who who practice the tea ceremony. So it is kind of huh. shifted. I mean, there there are still men for sure, but it it, it is uh, more, mostly women nowadays. Now we are up to our rating. I like that her overall design is inspired by the tea ceremony. I think that they were pretty clever with it. Although I think that the bikini might be a little too far, (laughs) in my opinion. But, you know, you do you. I like that she floats or flies on her zabutan. I think that's fun. Um, I like that she is upset when Yudiel leaves and calls her a selfish woman for making her finish the fight alone. (laughs) I think it's fantastic. She's mad at her boss. Um, I love that she made herself a bowl of matcha, which she sips as Chibi fails to hit her. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then she, of course, gets mad when she does hit her. But I also love that she furiously whisks some matcha to attack Sailor Moon while saying, allow you to allow me to show you my hospitality. Um, I really like her a lot. I'm going to give her four out of five dark stars. Interesting. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just feeling good, but I'm going to go with the big five. Really? I should have gone with five. This is, <laughs> you don't have to, we don't have to have the same review. We've got a different number for once. I know, but uh, sometimes I like you say it and then I'm like, no, I want to change mine. Maybe you should walk into every situation expecting me to give it a five and see how that changes. See how that changes your outlook. That's a good point. Uh, this is another one where um, they really leaned into the specific uh, yes. thing that it's about. Mm-hmm. Um, remember, <laughs> apparently, who's your favorite Yoma? Don't think about it. Tensi. I know, right? I just, I just always go back to Tensi, but Tensi is just, she's played tennis. And also she's got a flat top. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be, there's a lot of like 80s female tennis stars that had flat tops. Yeah, when uh, she turns Usagi into a giant tennis ball. Right. That's memorable. But that's like it. 
And like, as far as a concept goes, this is going the entire way. It is. But at the same time, if her skin was a normal color and um, she didn't have uh, Charlize Theron in the Fast and Furious movie hair, got her. <laughs> nice. Uh, then, you know, <laughs> she would just be a normal person. Like, I like that she doesn't have all this like crap hanging off of her. It wouldn't fit her team master sort of persona. Mm-hmm. And so she's got all that. And then they took the... The, the the whisk and we're like oh that's cool that could be hair that's her helmet it kind of like covers her face yes and then yeah everything else is great her powers are neat and the things that she says are, are funny they are um, she's got static with her boss which is always a plus for me mm-hmm. uh and also there's you know once the uh, kimono opens so to speak uh, we don't we don't know what's gonna happen. There are we don't. there are untold depths <laughs> to this Yoma. Like, what was the next thing? We'll never know. So I'm not a, ready. Yeah, there's a little uh, wistfulness there too. And so, yeah, I'd give her full marks. Uh, okay. I think she's really great. All right. Gosh, dang it! I want to change my. Yeah, too late. Anyways, <laughs> um, farewell, my lovely. Where we talk about how the diamond go out. She is disrobing, promising to show her true hospitality <laughs> Okay, girl. with a wicked cackle. <laughs> then she says that she's not ready yet as she sees the MSHA heading towards her. And her love holy is twisted as her body. Oh. Um, you know what? I'm going to give her four out of five. Uh, I am also going to go four out of five, um, mostly because edging towards... Uh, five out of five, but it's going to be four out of five, I think. Not because there's anything wrong with it. I think it's actually pretty strong. I always like it when it's uh, sort of twisted or they do something fun with it. I do too. And so I like that, you know, yeah, she, she's going to get killed. She's like, but I, I'm not, I got to do this. I'm not done. And this she's isn't like, the way. And then she's like, but. <laughs> oh, lovely. I know. So yeah, it's a, it's a strong one. Uh, yeah. I also, um, wanted to talk about uh, Thomas Saburo's uh, name. So it generally means a marble or ball or third born son, but it can also mean a female entertainer like a geisha, huh. but it most likely is a reference to Bando Thomas Saburo the fifth, uh, <sighs> who is a kabuki actor and he is the most popular and celebrated Onagata, who is an actor uh, who does female roles currently oh. on stage. So I think that's what this is. They they chose that name to reference oh. the Kabuki actor. Yeah. Uh, okay. So that, interesting. Yeah. So it, 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 it's a total, that's the, the key to unlocking this, this good looking, you know, this beautiful young boy. I who, think so. Uh, who then at the end goes, I'm going to wear, you know, female's clothing and do this. Oh. Right, right. (sighs) See what you can learn on this show? I know, right? All right. So much. All right. Well, that makes total sense now. I think so too. Okay. Uh, Now we're up to our rating. I I love that Chibi asks Minako to read the letter from her mom and that everyone gives Usagi a hard time about her future self (laughs) only using hiragana. That entire scene is great. Um, and while I can appreciate that kid who drops his pants as a reference to Cran Shinchan, <laughs> Just... <laughs> I am still scandalized by it. And I wanted to jump into the cartoon and just protect the heck out of Chibiusa and prevent her from being, you know, from seeing this. This was awful. I guess you have to appreciate that they're going for it. I mean, they're really not thinking about like, does this travel? <laughs> is, yeah. any, is anybody going to understand this? <laughs> Why this is happening. Outside of this country. Yeah. This is funny, isn't it? Yeah. And I love the, the tea ceremony and the Usa- this whole thing with Usagi and Chibi uh, in the Cezanne posture and them not being able to to sit. And, and to be fair, <laughs> it's very uncomfortable if you're not used to doing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they're, they're clearly not. And then just them just being so horrible to each other. But it's done in a funny way. <laughs> um, but again, I think we talked about it. I feel a little bit better about it, but I'm not over the moon about uh, Usagi and Chibi's reaction to Thomas Saburo and, and possibly also Haruka and Michiru's. So uh, that being said, I really enjoyed this episode. I think it's funny, but it, it's there are a couple things that kind of I'm not sure about. So I'm going to give it four out of five roses. Okay, fair enough. Um, I, you know, I'm going to give this a five. Really? Yeah. I okay. think uh, this is the top. It's right. a Waldorf salad. Uh <laughs> Look, I had How does to, this song go? I had to beat my welcome back Cotter reference okay, all right. by going back four decades. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> Take that, James Cameron. Oh, my God. Old timey Terminators. <laughs> uh, this just does everything right, uh, except for, you know, what we said at the end. And I'm willing to kind of give that a pass okay. just culturally in terms okay. of the story structure. Um, don't make me question that. Yeah, I'm going to go with a five. It's funny. Um, it's always a good time when Chibi's in town. I think uh, so, too. We're not really introducing anything, like, new. Like, we get it. They hate each other. Yes. Um, but also adding this very specific... This is one where it, it's... Fu- I could have watched it when it came out and went, oh, T, I get that. Sure. But, like, this is improved by by the Kira Kira Miro that you do. Because now you understand, like, w- how important it is and all the things that they're doing. And mm-hmm. then also when the bad guy comes out... Mm-hmm. And is doing all these things that are specifically related to, uh, to the the cultural uh, background of this, uh, of this scenario. Mm-hmm. Like it's just yeah. I mean the whole thing works for me. So it's I'm giving five. Oh cool. I'm 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 glad that um, uh, Kuro Kuro Miro can add to it. So yes, a kid flashes Chibiusa and the episode gets a five. Don't don't take anything from that. I I, I, I <laughs> I'm I'm not. I will take it at this, face value. We'll give it to you this time. Yes. Right. Uh, my English title is Heart Matcha, The Way of Friendship. <laughs> the uh, Do Tamagotchi Do. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. The, 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 the Way of Friendship, exactly. Uh, my, oh, wait a minute, where am I at this point? It's just, I'm doing my own titles. My my so. My Caliban title for this is yes. Shouting Matcha. Uh, I like it. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I could appreciate that. This is the easiest job in the world. (laughs) So next episode, we are talking about episode number 105. Pawa ga hoshi. Mako-chan no maioi michi in Japanese. I want power. Mako lost in doubt. The English translation. And the English title, People Who Need People. (laughs) I got nothing. Okay, this is it begins. Yeah, right. This is where this is where it starts. Um, uh, are we doing the Barbara Streisand song? What are we doing here? Yeah, people who need people. Well, I feel like when I was kind of scanning through some of the uh, the titles before, I thought like, okay, I get it. We're going to be doing like song titles and stuff like, that. and that's kind of how I initially approached it. But mm-hmm. then that kind of fell away, and uh, they just started doing whatever they want. It's tea, tea time terror. Or yeah. Whatever. Right. Uh, and so now, now it begins. Yeah, I I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. So we'll have to wait and see for next time. I guess we will. Don't you wait to follow us on social media at Sailor Noob or Sailor or Noob underscore Sailor on various platforms, mm-hmm. and uh, join us on our Discord. We have a dis Discord. Yes. Dis Discord. Discord. Where's the emphasis on which syllable? Oh, that is, don't ask me that. I'm uh, not a youngin. We're, um, well, you can debate it on the Discord. Okay. Uh, where we talk with our fans about nerdy stuff. Yes. And also about Sailor Noob. And uh, just had a new fan uh, join up on the Discord today. Came in from Spotify. Mm-hmm. So we appreciate that. Uh, if you're on Spotify, you can now give us a rating. And we'd appreciate uh, if you gave us a rating. Uh, yes. High one, hopefully. Five stars. Would be uh, and if you are on a platform where you can give us a review, we'd appreciate that as well. And mm-hmm. we will uh, read it on the show, as we always do. Mm-hmm. So come join us on the internet. Yes. Be a valuable acquaintance. <laughs> that's absolutely 100% right. Uh, well, that's our show for this week. In the name of the moon, we'll be punishing you next week with another episode of Sailor News. Take that, James Cameron. James Cameron.